After a miserable childhood, Catherine of Valois married King Henry V of England and secured her place in history. But after his death, she lived an uncertain life. Welcome to History Channel. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more history videos. Catherine of Valois died on the 3rd of January, 1437, and her corpse would be a macabre tourist attraction for centuries. But how did she end up being there? Catherine was born in the month of October 1401. Catherine's father was Francis King Charles VI. Her first husband, Henry V, was King of England, but it was her marriage to her second husband that established a new dynasty. Owain A.P. Merdad A.P. Tudor, or Owen Tudor, was a Welsh household official in the widowed queen's household. They fell in love and married in a scandalous way. Their sons would establish the Tudor dynasty, which ruled England for nearly 150 years. But Catherine, the mother of that dynasty, would be strangely disgraced after her death, and her descendants would ignore the situation. Catherine's cause of death is unknown. She had recently given birth, but records show she had a health problem for some time which is why she sought treatment or prayers at Bermondsey Abbey. She was 35 years old when she passed away on January 3rd. Despite her scandalous remarriage to Owen Tudor, Catherine was given a magnificent funeral fit for a queen. She was most likely embalmed soon after her death by removing her internal organs to prevent decay and stuffing the cavity with herbs and spices. The corpse was wrapped in cerecloth and encased in sheets of lead. This bundle was then placed inside a wooden coffin. The organs that had been extracted were placed in jars or boxes and sometimes buried separately. Often, the deceased organs were buried in the churches where the funeral procession stopped. But there is no mention of Catherine's organs being discovered at the one documented stop, St. Catherine's, the church of her patron saint. She was laid to rest there before the procession moved on to its final destination. An effigy of the deceased, usually dressed in their own clothes, was placed atop the coffin. Catherine's effigy was made of wood and can still be found in Westminster Abbey today. It has a long neck and a charming tilt to the head and is painted in realistic colors. Effigies were designed to look as much like the deceased as possible, so if Catherine's effigy followed this tradition, she would have been tall and willowy. According to the painted surface on the scalp, the effigy used to have a wig of human hair attached to its head. Her eyes were a blue-gray color. The effigy now only wears its painted redshift but it wore a purple satin mantle during the funeral. The coffin itself was wrapped in gold cloth and sat atop a massive hearse. Catherine was given a second funeral service on February 8, 1437, and was laid to rest in an alabaster tomb in Westminster Abbey near her first husband, Henry V. The story would end here for most people, but not for Catherine. Her son Henry VI wanted to build a more fitting memorial for her, but he died before he could decide what to erect in her honor. Her grandson, Henry VII, decided to demolish the old lady chapel where Catherine was buried and build a new one. Destroying her tomb in the process, and discovering her body while digging the new foundations. Catherine's remains, as well as the inner lead coffin, were removed after the outer wood coffin was discovered to be badly decayed. They were placed in a chest made of wood and lined with flat sheets of lead cut from the old chapel roof. The chest was next to her husband's grave on the floor. It would last another three centuries. Some speculated later that Henry VII purposefully destroyed the tomb to distance himself from his forefathers. He did, however, specifically mention Catherine as someone he wanted to be buried in his will. Our noble forefathers in blood, particularly the body of our great dame of right noble memory, Queen Catherine, wife of King Henry V, rest in our Westminster Monastery. He appears to have envisioned the Lady Chapel as a Tudor family tomb. Henry VII died before the chapel could be completed, and some of his directives were never carried out by his son, Henry VIII. Henry VIII did not bury his great-grandmother. None of the Tudors who followed him did either. The chest in which Catherine's body was placed appears to have had a two-section lid. As later accounts state that the lid was open to display her remains from the waist up whenever visitors wanted to see her. Some curious souls stripped the cerecloth back from Catherine's face and chest, down to her legs, and found her remains intact, though desiccated. He bones being firmly united, and thinly clothed with flesh, like scrapings of tanned leather. 
because people describe her bare skin with no clothing on, it appears Catherine was buried naked in her shroud and displayed without it. It's said that Abbey tour guides charged visitors a shilling to see Catherine's remains, and her body was a popular tourist attraction for up to 300 years. According to legend, Catherine ended up where she did because she chose to give birth to Henry VI at Windsor against her husband's wishes. Henry V allegedly heard a prophecy that a prince born at Windsor would lose everything his father had gained and ordered Catherine not to give birth there. But Catherine refused. Sensible of her fault in disobeying her husband, it was her own desire and pleasure that her body should never be buried. If so, it is pity but that woman should have her will therein, whose dust doth preach a sermon of duty to feminine, and of mortality to all, beholders. The legend reflects earlier judgments that Catherine couldn't control her fleshly lust for Owen Tudor. So Catherine may have been viewed as an unsympathetic person who became a morbid curiosity, as a result of her own bad behavior. Catherine's remains were placed in the Villiers' vault in 1788, when the vault was opened to admit the recently deceased Countess of Buckingham. For nearly a century, it lay undisturbed, and memory began to fade. Dean Stanley began looking for Catherine in the records, and her location was half forgotten. Lord Percy died in December 1877, and his family tomb was open to receive his body. The Villiers' vault was nearby. Dean Stanley's assistants entered the Percy vault with Queen Victoria's permission after waiting until the evening after the funeral. They smashed through the thin wall separating the tombs to see if Catherine was indeed in the Villiers' vault and to retrieve her. Her remains were discovered on top of a pile of coffins beneath the Countess's effigy by Stanley's team. Catherine's coffin had fallen against a damp wall as the pile had shifted. That wall's wood had rotted into a soft, pulpy mush. When they attempted to lift Catherine's coffin, it became stuck to the coffin beneath. They were able to free it and slid a solid plank of wood beneath it, shored up the pulpy side, and moved it. They managed to work the coffin free and lift it out of the vault after a lot of shifting around in the small space. However, the change in humidity had an immediate effect, and the coffin had fallen into fragments within a few hours. Unfortunately, several portions of Catherine's body were missing. The examiners thought the remains had been doused with lime and that it had eaten away at several areas but they could have misinterpreted the damage they saw. The entire front portion of her skull was missing, and one piece of the back was discovered lying on her pelvis. Most of her vertebrae were missing, as were all but one of her ribs and two of her right arm bones. They looked everywhere but couldn't find a single one of her teeth. One of her clavicles had been removed and replaced with a pelvic bone. The bones and teeth were most likely stolen as souvenirs over time. There appears to have been some accidental damage at this point, as one of the report's contributors notes that the bones were so fragile due to the dampness that they powdered away when touched. Like wet sand, but hardened as they dried. He must have kept poking at them to figure this out. Her legs, on the other hand, were discovered to be perfectly wrapped in twelve layers of circlocloth. They report that the skin remaining on her right arm smoothed out as she dried, and her legs remained supple. They discovered remnants of a wool pillow beneath her head, beneath the sheds of circlocloth she had lain on for the last 400 years, still retaining a few fragments of the silk that had once covered it. One of these shreds was presented to Queen Victoria. They strengthened the coffin and carried it into Henry V's chapel. It was a striking and impressive scene, which I shall ever remember, and which at the time was impossible to view without some feeling of emotion, one of the witnesses later wrote. They placed Catherine's remains into a new coffin, made of thick English oak, they put the pieces of the old chest inside the new one, along with an inscription plate explaining the journey her body had taken over the last hundred years. Lifting the altar slab, they built a new tomb beneath it using grey marble, with a slab of slate inside on which the coffin would rest. Catherine finally had the tomb of a queen four hundred years after her death. The Latin inscription reads, Under this slab, for long cast down and broken up by the fire, rest at last, after various vicissitudes, finally deposited here by command of Queen Victoria. The bones of Catherine de Valois, daughter of Charles VI, King of France, wife of Henry V, mother of Henry VI, grandmother of Henry VII, born 1400, crowned 1421, died 1438. The date of birth is off by one year, as is the date of her death. 
Catherine was born on October 27, 1401, and died on January 3, 1437. The report of her reinterment in the abbey ends with these lines. It is the latest royal tomb in the abbey, and though long delayed, it has been thought that the singular and romantic history of a French princess and an English queen should at length be brought to an honorable end. Requescat in pace. What do you think of the way they treated Catherine's body? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel to support us.